This is a conversation I really wanted to have. And it's Monday now. We've gotten past the point where just about everybody's talked about the draft. We all gave our inputs, gave our grades, what we think about these teams and certain players, certain fits on certain teams. But I didn't get to talk about the Detroit Lions in depth. And I think with some other teams that I'm going to talk about in depth, this is one of the teams that I want to talk about because they're, they have been a talking point. They've been a hot topic and not for the right reasons. We talk about Brad Holmes and everything about the Detroit Lions coming into this season. We expect them to take that next step. Should have made the playoffs last year. This is a season. Aaron Rodgers is out of that division. We got the Chicago Bears looking promising, but are we really sure? You know, it's just all about competing in the division. Where can we make our play? Where can we make our shot trying to get there? Talk about the Minnesota Vikings, a big question mark. And I really like what Chicago did in the draft. But I want to talk about the Detroit Lions today, and I want to focus in and give my take on it. Now, initially, I was in the park. I was in the camp of guys who said this was a failure of a draft. I said it flat out. You took a running back at 12. I, my philosophy doesn't see a running back ever fitting at 12. Now, Bijan, I, I can kind of be sold on that point. I think Bijan is a way better prospect than Jameer Gibbs, even though Jameer Gibbs is the second best running back or weapon, whatever you want to call him in this class. I think Bijan is on a different level. Now, as far as Jameer Gibbs has the breakaway speed, can catch the ball out of the backfield, gives you a lot of things. And like I said, not just a true running back, an actual weapon that we can just scheme him up, get him the football. Jack Campbell, kind of that same thing. But see, the question with me about Jack Camel was, we just re-signed Alex Anzalone. We got Malcolm Rodriguez. But I understand this is a 4-3 defense. So if he can play the mic and we have Anzalone and Rodriguez as Sam Will, I can understand and kind of side with it. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not taking back the fact of what I said about the value. I don't think it could have been some different players in some different spots. That's overall how I feel. But I can see. I can see the vision of Brad Holmes. I can see what some of you Detroit Lions fans are seeing. And that's where we're going to find our talking points, find our common ground within this thing. Now, let's just start it off. Let's really talk about it in totality. Jack Campbell was my favorite linebacker in this class. I wanted any team that was looking for a linebacker, that was the guy. Drew Sanders, another guy we could throw in there. But I think Jack Campbell is the true essence of what we think about when we think middle off the ball linebacker. Reads his keys, has his instincts, the size 6'5", 246, as we can see listed here. He just gives me that vibe. The leader, he's going to call out all the plays, make the checks at the line of scrimmage. We're calling the strength of the formation. We're doing those typical off the ball. He's been there. And you could tell he's a guy who's been playing it at a high level. And that really translates when we get to the NFL. We're not just putting a freak athlete in the middle of the field. He knows what he has feel in coverage. He gets, but when people get behind him in zone, he can feel that out. And also he has the length to get in those passing lanes. So I think that's telling me that we have somebody who's going to be day one impact middle linebacker. Now, when we talk about taking him at 18, though, I just want to know, who was the threat? Because as we see, we had the 34th pick right here. And I, I'm going to talk about it some more. But Jameer Gibbs as well. Who was the threat of taking those guys so high? You know, the Buffalo Bills, Dallas Cowboys. There are some teams. I don't think that linebacker was at the top of their board. Now, if you want to make and I've been thinking about it heavily. Did the Buffalo Bills trade up and take a Dalton Kincaid because their linebacker, their next guy to replace Tremaine Edmonds was off the board? Or were they going to take a tight end all along? Because that's one of the only teams I could think would have the urge to take a Jack Campbell. I mean, the New York Giants, they could have added a linebacker, but they got Bobby Orique. Who really has the dire need in the value of taking a linebacker right there? And as we saw, a lot of these linebackers fell. Dan Henley fell, went to the Chargers. I mean, Overshone, Dorian Williams, all of these guys, it wasn't viewed as an overall strong linebacker class. And that could also, on the other side of it, be the selling point because we're saying this linebacker class is terrible. 
Jack Campbell. He's been there. He's done it instinctive. We don't care about the freak athletic testing, even though he, he tested fairly well for his size at the combine. But we don't care about that because those instincts, knowing football and knowing how to read your keys, read gaps, flow with the football, that's going to speed up your playing speed rather than you running in some spandex on a track field. It, I can understand he's the best in a very weak class and that pushes him up the board. So that's why I'm saying I wouldn't necessarily do it, but I can see why. Now, Jameer Gibbs, kind of that same thing. This running back class for it to be very deep, which I think it was, it was kind of interesting how those guys went off the board. Now, we see teams are devaluing running backs, and it could be that Bijan and Jameer Gibbs were two clear cuts and everything else was far down the board for teams. That could be that, but I do think at 12, I just don't see the threat of another team that would have taken them. Now, when I talk about why we take these players so high, we look at that second round pick and we know they wanted to add a tight end with Brock Wright. They got Sam Laporta. Now, interesting enough because, okay, you didn't want to get, you didn't want to get Gonzalez. You didn't want to get Kincaid. You didn't want to get any of those defensive linemen. So we understanding that now. We see, and I think they had a plan going into this. As I, as I look at the board, I'm getting the feeling that they knew what they wanted to do, and it wasn't anything that was going to shake them out of that. Now, I knew they liked Witherspoon. I thought they liked Gonzalez as well in the pre-draft process, but as we can see, they had the opportunity, didn't take it. Now, Sam Laporte is a nice tight end. I feel like he didn't get to showcase his full ability at Iowa, but he's an athletic guy, and he's a nice target. He gives me more of a pass-catching feel than a Michael Mayer, who went, I, I believe, a spot after him. And I really like Sam Laporta. Now, some people are going to question the pick. You watch Sam La All of these tight ends are good, whether it be Tucker Craft, Luke Musgrave. Those guys, I believe this will be a solid tight end class that translates to the NFL. But I feel like, I, I feel like they knew. They kind of knew because if you're going to take Sam Laporta right there and you have the feeling Brian Branch being that nickel guy who's kind of going to translate, but do we really value nickel corners? Are we going to use him as a Swiss army knife, try to play him in some too high, play him around the box, just move him around as a defensive mismatch? I think that's their ideology with the Brian Branch pick. And you knew that if he's going to fall, we're not going to be able to get our tight end that we want at this third round. Because we're seeing the Hendon Hooker. We're seeing some of the other guys, some of these quarterbacks, Jake Hayner. That may be our potential board when we get to that third round, when we get to that third round pick. So we get Sam Laporta right here. And I do like, like I said, Tucker Craft, Musgrave, those guys also went around, you know, the area. So if they wanted that, but I think they were higher on Sam Laporta. They couldn't take Jack Campbell or Jameer Gibbs down the board because they wanted both of them. Now, see, now I'm starting to see it about what the Detroit Lions really had in their mind. Because we want to take these guys. We, we need them. <laughs> We're trading DeAndre Swift, as we can see, went to Philadelphia. And we need these players in these positions. It's not high value, but we have no choice. And... So we, we follow the idea of Brad Holmes. He wanted Jameer Gibbs with that first pick, and he wanted Jack Campbell. He knew at the 34th pick he was going to take one of those tight ends to add in that passing game. And then he knew once he saw, I'm pretty sure, once he saw Brian Branch dropping, that really pushed him into getting him at that 45th selection. So I kind of see the ideology, and I'm thinking as more and more as it grows, this was actually a good draft. Now, we're never going to like the value. I still don't like the value of a running back and a linebacker in the first round. But when we're looking at the draft board, I think Brad Holmes stuck to what he knows. And that's why I'm not questioning it, saying it's terrible. I wouldn't do it. And I've, I'm, I mean, I keep saying that because I wouldn't do it. I want to make that clear. But I can see his board and I see what he's doing. And I can always follow that. I can trust that because if you're a guy who's not going to go out of your way to make a pick you know you shouldn't make and then it falls, it goes bad, then what are you really doing? Are you really built to be the GM? I'm going to stick to my board. I'm going to stay precise. I'm going to stay calculated. And as we can see, got Hern, got Hendon Hooker in the third round. Another pick that I really liked was Project Martin. 
I mean, and then we look at these guys in the fifth and seventh round. Some guys who we're going to try to add depth with. Antoine Green, I think, is a nice player. I like his size, and I really want to see what he does in training camp because this is a team that I said could add a receiver. They added receiver to Antoine Green, Kobe Sword. So, I mean, I like those guys, William and Mary. And then we got Broderick Martin again from Western Kentucky. To totality of it, and thinking about the process, I feel better about this draft. Now, it's interesting to see because in a draft where it wasn't a lot of high ceiling guys, you took the high floor guys, and I, I'm, it's growing on me. That's all I can say. That's what I'm gonna leave you with. That's my thought for this video because we were kind, we were wrong. You know, I admit when I'm wrong in saying that uh, something was terrible and it, I looked more into it and I thought about it from a football aspect. Jack Campbell is a good linebacker and you knew you wanted that tight end. You knew Brian Branch was falling because of his positional value. You knew you could potentially get a quarterback. So we knew what the plan was going into this thing. Now I'm not trying to sell anybody on the philosophy of this draft. This is Brad Holmes. This is what he wanted to do and I can respect that for the Detroit Lions. The draft has grown to me. I think you had a good draft because you got players who are good you you know you didn't go get the edge rusher with the high upside and the super long arm length you didn't go get the corner who runs a four or three you got the guys you know are football players and again i can respect that thank you for watching the video don't forget to subscribe if you like the content we're coming out with more also going to do a chicago bears draft analysis because i do have some talking points about that and i know the bears fans always love it so thank you for watching for today and that's gonna do it but now we out